It's Thursday, April 9th, and today I talk with Chris Edwards about content rationalization. Chris and I talk about how do we get the most important high value content over and into Microsoft 365. Enjoy. Today I'm here with Chris Edwards to talk about content rationalization. You excited about it's this, Chris? It's an exciting topic, right? <laughs> yeah. Why excellent, not? Excellent. Let's talk about and everybody. It. Welcome to the Two Ball Brothers and a Microphone podcast. Chris is sporting <laughs> a new, uh, yeah. new look to his hair. You're looking good. I like it. I like I'm it a, a lot. I'm a simulated brother for the day. Yeah. So I'll, I'll mix in. There you go. You got you got um, you got bored in quarantine, huh? So you That's just right. started chopping your hair off. Well, it's like okay, I can't really do anything else with my hair. It's nothing. It's just growing in weird places. It's like you know what? I'm just gonna take care of this myself. Be done with it. Good. Well, you got a nice look. You got a nice looking melon, so no problem. That's, that's so let's let's jump into this. What what is uh, let's ten thousand foot level? What are we talking about when we're talking about content ra rationalization? Yeah, so when we're talking about content rationalization, what we're really getting into is is more of this process methodology um, to, to really focus in on content that's in your infrastructure, in your organization, that's, that's truly important, that needs to be retained. And it's okay. also content in your, you know, whatever environment you're talking to. Maybe it's a SharePoint environment. Maybe it's uh, a Jive environment. Maybe it's something else. Yeah. Um, but it's also important to identify content that's not so much important. Maybe things that could be archived, things that could be uh, kind of put aside, if you will. Yeah. So like temporary conversations that might not last over a longer period of time, and all and all right. that sort of stuff. That's so amazing. this probably comes this probably comes into play with us looking at. Um, a lot of our transformations over into Microsoft 365, sort of looking at if we're moving from some some other platform, what do we need to move over? Where's where's the value in the content that of of, of moving that content over? Right, exactly. So I mean, from a from the pure looking at Office 365. Um, you know, let's say you're you're moving stuff into that environment. Let's say a Jive migration is a good example. Um, you might have a a ton of content that's old, it's just purely way out of date, maybe three, four, five years old. Uh, yeah. and may it may just be uh, a lot of status, you know, status notifications or status updates, things like that. You know, it's very important to kind of clearly delineate what is relevant content that's going to add value going forward. Um, and you know. It's, it's just one of those things that, you know, when you're doing a, say a migration, that's typically where we start talking about content rationalization. You're trying to you're trying to move from one platform to another. So yep. it's important to identify what is valuable, what is not valuable, um, so that you don't move over stuff that's not valuable. It costs money to move stuff, you know, and yep. exceptions to the rules are generated from that. It's just we don't want any of that. We want to streamline the process. We want to make sure that high value content is maintained, retained, and and we we could actually make that content that is valuable shine. You know, we yeah. want to make sure it, it's highlighted. So, and this is, I mean, this gets into we've had for many years. I mean, this gets back into the good old knowledge management stuff. Right. The stuff that you know we we've been having these conversations for 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 many years. And what I think this this plays back into as well is the fact that content has a life cycle. So yeah. it's sort of like you know, let's take an example because I think that might be best. It's sort of like. Um, to sort of capture, capture what we're talking about here. So you and I have an idea, you and I wanna work on a webinar together. And right. so we'll start having some conversations about it and we'll start saying, well, what do we wanna do? Here's what we have, you know, here's some things. And we'll start sort of like formulating the ideas and that might be in a couple of conversations. And then we might start drafting out like a, a PowerPoint deck that has sort of like, okay, this is what we want to have for the structure for this, and what, and then, and so that gets created, and then, and then there might be other people we start to pull in, and then there might be some other assets that we that come into this, and then, and then we might be storing some notes on sort of like how do we produce a webinar? So, so sort of like internally, like what's our process for producing a webinar? And so you, I, I sort of see this like you've got these conversations that need to happen. That's, right. can, that really, you, do you need them long term? Probably not, because they were they were work in process, part of making making things. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have these. Um, usually, it's like it's usually in some format, like is a file, like I think of like a file format, like something that is more 
permanent in structure. And then I also think there's this idea of like knowledge getting captured in like a wiki style thing where it's like something that's repeatable. So describing a process that's repeatable. And you really you need to think about like sort of where what's the value in that document? Well, that document. Yeah, let's we want that. Um, right. What's the value in that conversation? Well, I mean, it might be good to know some things about how we came to the conclusions, but not really that important. What's important, the, the process for creating a webinar. Yeah, we need to have that because we don't want to reinvent that. And so I just sort of see it as like there's different areas and there's different, there's sort of a life cycle to this stuff as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I like to think of it more towards like an, just like an analogy, like, okay, so if you are, um, if you're moving into a new house, you're downsizing, you know, your, yep. your, your life into a new house, you know, um, you kind of think of it as like your content is all your stuff, you know, you, you've lived in this place for a long time, right? Yep. And, and now it's like, okay, all this stuff you don't need, you collected a lot of stuff, you don't need this stuff anymore. Yep. You know, you, and you don't tell you what, when you move, you realize how much stuff you have. <laughs> it's amazing. Yep. Uh, I've gone through that a few times. It's like, well, it's amazing. You um, have to but, look like you're talking from experience right now. Uh, huh? Yeah, I've, I've moved enough. So uh, I know all that. And, and, you know, and that's painful moving that content. Why do you want to keep carrying it around, especially stuff that's just not valuable? You know, yeah. um, you, you need some help. Um, so another another example aspect of it, you need some help prioritizing. You know, how do you know what is valuable? You know, if if I was given the task um, to move, and I, I let's say I wouldn't know what's valuable for my wife or my kids or anything. I mean, I, they, yeah. they need their help, right? You need people help help from other people in the organization if you want to compare it back to the to, to physical content. You know, you need help yeah. from others to say what is important, what's not. Um, yeah. You moving. Um, so another part of the example of the analogy, you know, you're moving to a new place. Um, well, there's new rooms that you didn't have before. You know, there's yeah. new things, there's new capabilities, new functionality that yeah. you that you have now. Uh, how does that play into that? Does this content move into those new areas? Oh, maybe, maybe it makes sense. Maybe it allows them to shine that way. I don't know. Um, the, other thing, the, other, the, the other thing I think comes into this as well is the archiving, right? When you're moving into the new house, do you, you know, what stuff do you, what file, cap, what, what do you put up into the attic that you know you need to have just in case? Right. And then what stuff can you throw away? What, what stuff can you get rid of? And I think we're, I'm seeing that a lot with people is like, what, you know, we just need an archive of this site just, just in case we need to see it in the future. And I think that comes into play as well with this. All right. Well, yeah, yeah, another example, kind of going back to the, the kind of moving example, it's like, you know, you move into a smaller place. OK, maybe you need a storage unit. It's like, OK, how long do you want to keep that storage unit? That costs money right, right to do that. Yep. You know, you're paying yep. for something you probably may not leave, may or may not need, you know. Yeah. So it's really content rationalization is the act of kind of going through and and doing that work up front and making sure that you really vetted out that content. And now let's take appropriate action with it, whether we're migrating it, whether we're putting an archive plan, whether we're putting yeah. things around it. We've cleared out the cruft and we know exactly what we have and what we're dealing with. So how that, that's put, kind of the thing. How do you put a value to content? Um, how do you how do you talk, like do you like is there yeah. a um, and I, I'm assume this and I'm asking this because I, I, I think I wrote a. Um, blog post many years ago about like trying to figure out how to do this like okay. is is each word document worth x amount of you know like how like what do you um because because uh, you know right. how do you value the content how do you what and a, and a part of it i think that whenever you're modeling something mm -hmm. it has to the model has to come from the customer because sure. the customer it's in their mind what is the value of something what is the value of something to me could be completely different than you and right. then you have to there and and it's not only an individual but it has to be an organization's thought of what the value is of that content and i i don't know if i've i, know, I don't have the answer to this but i just pose the question to you how do you figure well, that out well a lot of times when we're working with an organization um especially for a migration or something like that we really start looking at okay we, we talk about those things we try and take inventory first thing we do typically is take inventory of the content what yep. is the holistic view of all the stuff that's out there the stuff that really matters um do we have a good picture of all that first Yes. So that's the first step, right, into kind of feeding this whole process. But then you start looking at things, and, you, and typically we'll talk through with the customers, like, is are the dates of, of last viewed dates on a particular piece of content, is that important? Okay. Maybe okay. something hasn't been viewed in two years, three years. You know, if, if we can easily tell that, then that's like, okay, if it's hitting that kind of threshold, yeah, maybe that's an important metric to say it's not that valuable, right? People aren't yeah. looking at it, aren't using it. Uh, and also, you know, maybe there is um, – 
something that has been flagged as an answer to something. You know, typically we have discussions. Discussions are a very kind of key pieces of content that typically have a question answer type flavor to them, right? So let's say, you know, someone's someone's marked a question and an answer as a very important as a published answer. Well, that's yeah. probably going to be valuable content to keep, right? That's that's that FAQ, that's that thing that that someone's vetted out. Okay, that's probably important to keep regardless of how old it is, you know, yep. but then that may come into play too. So it, there's all kinds of things, you know, dates, statuses, is it published? Uh, is it in draft state? If it's in draft state, that's probably not valuable anymore. You know, it yep. may require some additional discussion, may may require other people. And that's one thing we do as part of the inventory process, typically as well, when we're looking at content in general, is it who owns this content? So we can ask yep. these questions, you know, it's like, okay, this hasn't been viewed in, Two years, but it is, you know, seems to be high priority, has some sort of uh, interesting status to it. Let's talk to these people, you know. Yeah. So you have to consider all those things. And one important aspect with migrations in general, as because we're kind of, kind of on the edge of that topic, um, is exceptions. There's always an exception to the rule. So let's say we apply certain rules throughout all the inventory content we have. We say we say okay, it, everything older than two years is is considered not important anymore. Well, yeah. there may be ten sites within all of that content that that's not that's not applicable, right? That doesn't make sense. We have yep. to be able to kind of clearly say these are important no matter what, right? So it, it's this it's the whole pattern and practice of going through that process and making sure we are uh, are putting. The, the right rules in place and looking at it through the right lenses without overdoing it and also accounting for the exceptions. So yep. hopefully that makes sense. Absolutely. And I think this all fits in fairly well with sort of Rob's vision with building with the transformation practice, sort of building your digital estate. So I think this is a, your analogy of moving is probably a good one. And right. I don't, I don't think there's a, um, there, I don't think there's one that's out there that, uh, you, you know, you don't. It doesn't all have to be in Microsoft 365, but um, I think for the people who do, do need help with that, this is an important subject to them. I appreciate. I'm, I'm not. I, I know you're busy, so I'm going to let you run back to projects. I appreciate your your time here. Um, um, if folks are hearing this and you're you're asking these questions about um, content rationalization, sort of like how can you uh, make sure that you're not losing the value of your content as you perhaps move on to Microsoft 365. We'd love to talk to you about that. Um, Chris has done some great stuff with some of the tools we've created. It's been, um, is the, he's the bazooka. <laughs> we, st we can still call you the bazooka, right? Uh, I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so thank love you, Chris, it. for your time. I'll let you get back at it. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for listening and have a wonderful day. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Work Together Better podcast. We're available on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn. If you're looking for a partner to help you craft a modern digital workplace on the Microsoft Cloud, please come by and see us at 3will.com. That's the number three spelled out, W-I-L-L.com. Thank you and have a great day.